for this uh, free publicity. So uh, welcome for this uh, new workshop. I think that uh, now today we are at the heart of our preoccupations because uh, if there is one area in which uh, the digital era has uh, changed a lot of things, it is very much uh, this entrepreneurial dimension. I think that uh, before the arrival of the internet, Things were fairly uh, frozen in terms of the economic model for various reasons, and that the arrival of the digital era by uh, changing both the environment and also the way in which we produce content uh, by multiplying what I call uh, uh, the um, warm water, what I call uh, this quantity of information which uh, uh, we come by every day, for which we are no longer ready to pay, has made us ask uh, a lot of questions about uh, how to uh, give a new value to information, and that's what uh, the uh, CEO of uh, the uh, RFP was uh, talking about this morning. So without uh, being uh, too caricatural, but of course we will nevertheless do this a little because we are journalists, to my left I have Maurice Bulbul, who is uh, the founder and uh, leader of a uh, group um, called uh, Livo Publications, uh, which you probably know because uh, it uh, edits uh, confidential letters, of which the continental letter, letter uh, it's a reference in that area for African countries. And Maurice Bodbol is one of the people who uh, was uh, a forerunner uh, in the way in which he envisaged how the internet would change the economic model of the media. And uh, to my right, uh, so to my left, I have the CEO, and to my right, I have uh, the workhorse, if I may say so, uh, the uh, journalist uh, who, uh, columnist, uh, Sofiane Benhaj, uh, who is from Tunisia, and he is going to explain to us how he uh, manages to, to make a living from this uh, work. So Maurice, I will now hand over to you. And uh, you, I would also like to highlight another role which you take on. You are president of the SPIL, which is uh, the trade union for online independent information, which is a trade union which is uh, uh, one which is trying to make the internet uh, better recognized uh, as uh, playing a central role in the economic model for journalism. Well, thank you very much. And the question, uh, can a journalist make a living from journalism? Well, I think yes, often no, but yes, so long as uh, the context in which he works uh, is favorable to him. And also, so long as he uh, respects a certain number of uh, basic principles for his uh, profession. I am uh, trained as a journalist in, uh, trained in Strasbourg. I work for the regional press. And then I uh, traveled a lot in Africa. And in uh, 1981, so it's quite a long time ago now, I decided to, to create, precisely to be able to be independent, my own publication. And I did a quick uh, economic survey. I think that uh, the uh, job of uh, press editor is not just to produce information, it's also to find uh, readership and uh, to uh, convince uh, people to subscribe or to read your content. And so I needed um, to have things to say, but I also need to know whether there was a, an audience which was available and also whether the economic conditions uh, would make this possible. My first publications, which still exists, is called The Letter from the Indian Ocean. It uh, is a focus towards uh, a professional and specialized uh, readership uh, who uh, want uh, both an independent and uh, original publication to look at. When I uh, started in 1981, we only had a paper. We didn't have the internet, as, so we worked with uh, telex and fax. And this seems a very distant now. But when, uh, I when I studied, I didn't know the system of confidential letters. It was only when I studied the economic system, I realized that uh, they distributed press in all the countries which I was interested in, i.e. going from uh, West Africa to East Africa, and including the Indian Ocean. There were many dictatorships, either left-wing or right-wing, and there were no 
freedom of the press in those countries, uh, and so distributing freely towards the uh, uh, audience at large was impossible. And if you wanted to uh, uh, reach a greatest number of people, we had to use publicity. But uh, publicity in those countries is usually linked to the state, and so they have a strong power of uh, censorship. So uh, we had to uh, use the model of what we call the confidential letter, which uh, which is a publication which will give information which are exclusive, uh, new, uh, which uh, is uh, targeted towards uh, businesses, diplomats, di diplomats uh, administrators, members of government, i.e. people who work for institutions and who are able to pay a very high price for their subscription, not to please us, of course, but simply because they are going to find information there which they can't find anywhere else. In order to do that, we needed to uh, mount a, a network of correspondence, and uh, I traveled a lot, yeah, and I was able to recruit a lot of columnists across the region. And so this is the, the economic model, was uh, the uh, confidential letter of information with a high subscription rate, and this is then distributed uh, through uh, the uh, post. A second important point, um, I decided that the French-speaking uh, audience was not uh, sufficient to publish only in French. And a second point, I didn't want uh, to uh, just end up in, in uh, local French-speaking African politics. And so this public, right from the start, was published both in English and in French. And the fact that it was uh, bilingual uh, forces you to write differently, to think differently, and uh, to uh, to do focus or target to two different uh, publics. And that is also what is uh, quite unusual about our publications, is that they are generally speaking both in English and in French. And then I decided to uh, publish more widely across Africa, um, particularly focusing on uh, West Africa, but also uh, Maghreb Confidential focusing on North Africa. And then we also have uh, two other sectorial letters, one on uh, the question of uh, energy, African intelligence, and another one on mines, African mining intelligence. Why those two topics? Well, because they are strategic topics which uh, have a strong influence on the ecosystem of all the countries where there are either mining or electricity producing uh, functions. So. And a very sensitive uh, editorial aspect uh, is uh, always to uh, uh, cover uh, things more widely than strictly from an economic perspective. We will always include the political perspective. And generally, uh, what um, is uh, lacking the most in uh, Africa is this uh, political dimension, which is, of course, important for the economic players. We also have uh, Intelligence Online, which we started in 1990, which covers an area which is uh, quite interesting. It's about uh, the uh, intelligence services across the world. The subject is uh, quite uh, unusual. Why did we decide to do this? Well, again, because uh, there we decided there was a kind of black hole on information on those uh, subjects. Uh, they're very little covered. It's difficult to understand how intelligence services work and what their activities are, what are their modus operandi. And it's true that when we are working on Africa, I was fairly surprised to see that uh, there was a uh, uh, a, a sergeant who all of a sudden became a sergeant in the army, all of a sudden becoming a head of state. So um, it's led one to suspect that uh, the, uh, there were some fairly secret activities which uh, allowed him to arrive at uh, where he arrived. And so there is a publication which initially was called The World of Intelligence, which is now called Intelligence Online, which is again bilingual and which uh, covers the activities of intelligence services across the world. It is unique. There is no other publication of this type in the world. It is uh, a domain which is uh, very tricky, but uh, which is also interesting. In 1995, we opened our first uh, internet site. We are amongst the uh, pioneers of internet in France. There were not many uh, news websites at the time. I had an international readership, and uh, I found that the best way of uh, reaching them and was uh, by going on the internet, because uh, this allowed us uh, to uh, cover great distances. So our first uh, website in uh, 1995, and it was uh, paying right from the start. There was no payment uh, system at the time. No one uh, did this, and I couldn't see how I could give out information, which I had to pay for, 
and how I was going to be able to pay my journalist without uh, doing publicity advertising. So we implemented an online uh, payment system, which we then uh, improved progressively. The last five years, well, up until then, we were entirely working on an international scale. And uh, the last uh, in the last five years, we've taken up uh, two publications in France. One calls Letter A, which covers uh, uh, economic and political activity in France, and the other one called Press News, which covers uh, news from the press in France. Today, we uh, are we are in charge of uh, six uh, websites: uh, four in French and uh, two in English. Uh, of which uh, African Intelligence uh, .fr, which uh, is a portal which groups together uh, all of our African publications and Intelligence Online, which uh, covers the information uh, provided in the paper copy, and then the letter A, the letter A uh, regarding uh, France. So that is a uh, rapid uh, tour. Thank you. You were saying that uh, today <coughs> the uh, revenues generated by internet uh, actually uh, go to to benefit the company. No, today the uh, uh, revenue generated by internet uh, it represents 90 percent of our income since 1995 so in 1995 we created a system the uh, electronic uh, uh, the electronic uh, purse we allowed uh, the uh, public to not just buy a an addition or a subscription per year uh, unlike it for our internet readership, we gave them the possibility of buying articles, individual articles by the unit. And uh, that uh, is the aspect which now uh, gives us the, uh, most of our income today. The internet revolution, if we want to remain uh, strictly on the economic perspective, the revolution brought about by the internet is that, well, before the internet, we had a single project product which we sold as an annual subscription, which uh, cost about uh, between 600 and 800 euros per year. So either someone was able to pay 800 euros uh, per year or he wasn't. Thanks to internet, we were able to uh, multiply the channels of distribution. We are uh, now selling our content uh, from one euro fifty, which is the lowest price of an article, article up to one hundred and fifty euros, which is uh, a uh, user license for either an uh, an institution or a heavy user who wants um, a large number of his uh, employees to be able to read the publication. So, with the same content. We are selling things at uh, starting at one euro fifty, and we also we are selling uh, to whole channels. For example, in Gabon, they don't want to know what is going on in Ivory Coast or in Burkina Faso. So, someone in uh, Gabon is uh, going to subscribe to a website which will only give him articles on Gabon, and that costs between two hundred and fifty and three hundred euros. Then you have a traditional um, subscription, and then also you can ha you have the uh, administration or the company. A subscription who is going to be able to subscribe uh, uh, for uh, several of uh, their high level managers and of course that uh, uh, costs uh, quite a lot more because it's rather more complex for us so that is the aspect which has fundamentally changed i with the same content we have a much wider offer thank you sofiana benhaj you um, are able to earn a living from uh, your um, production in tunisia Mm, well, uh, earn a living is difficult from your content, but uh, to survive, maybe. The world of journalism and of the press is quite tricky. We have known 23 years of dictatorship, and uh, during those years, uh, journalists have not uh, played a strong role in the country. Therefore, there is a kind of tradition which has uh, implemented, which uh, is one of uh, mistrust towards journalists. And so we are trying to um, encourage uh, independence of the press, because even a system of subscription is not possible in Tunisia which is an aberration because we have a very uh, high level of development of the internet and a high level of uh, penetration. But uh, despite that, we're not allowed to have uh, subscriptions and we don't have any means of payment. 
And even if we did have a means of payment, we don't have it in our uh, customs uh, to pay for information that is not part of the journalistic uh, custom in our country. Uh, today, uh, we have a few young journalists who have managed to make uh, or to survive by uh, doing what we can uh, where we can. Uh, originally, I started off as a blogger and then I metamorphosed by professionalizing myself. And after the 14th of January, we were kind of co-opted by some media because it was kind of sexy to have uh, amongst your news team a, a blogger. But uh, they wanted to integrate us in these newsrooms without actually giving us space. We were used to being totally free and independent, able to uh, touch on any subjects we wanted. And yet we realized that as soon as we entered the Tunisian media, we couldn't uh, uh, touch on every subject. There was lobbying, there were pressures. With a friend, for example, we tried to develop a, a news uh, site, so dictator.net. But uh, very quickly, we realized that uh, we would not be able to uh, live from the publicity because the, these adverts uh, generally go to not very serious news sites who actually uh, just uh, do not very serious stuff in order to just attract a maximum amount of traffic. Whereas we wanted to write analyt true analytical articles, and this therefore doesn't work because very few people read our content. We have, uh, we have a very low readership. But, so people come along, they share the article, and when we look at the level of uh, connections, it's about uh, two or three seconds. That means that uh, people uh, simply read the title, uh, share the title, and then uh, leave the site. And uh, uh, a news site uh, which uh, um, made a joke, a jokey title last April, and in the content of the article, they were talking about the uh, stupidity of uh, people who sh only ever shared the title of articles. While this was extremely successful, um, people shared the article a lot just uh, because of the title and people who hadn't at all read the content. So we are trying to test uh, other means. Of course, uh, there is nothing we can do about this uh, photo. Um, and video content has precedence over text. People, uh, so what we've uh, thought about is actually for uh, to propose a uh, live reading of our text uh, or, and also to uh, propose a video uh, to go with it. So these are the kind of difficulties which make journalism in Tunisia very dicey. It is uh, no longer a, it is not a profession which is sufficiently appreciated and uh, news and, in, and independent journalism is not sufficiently appreciated in Tunisia. We are in a period of metamorphosis in Tunisia and we don't yet know how we're going to manage to make a living from journalism. Earlier you were saying that it is a very difficult in terms of uh, uh, the technical aspect. You don't have any technical models, uh, modules for online payment. Does uh, advertising remain a uh, main model, i.e. Uh, online advertising, or do you end up uh, falling in uh, the uh, traps, which uh, Maurice was uh, underlining earlier, which is that either you end up either being controlled by the state or by uh, companies controlled by the state and who end up having then leverage over you. Yes, absolutely, that is the problem. I'll just give you an example. The day after the 14th of January, one of the um, uh, companies, so the part of the Orange uh, Mobile Group, has started to finance one of the news sites, but uh, actually the regime was behind uh, this company. And so as soon as one of these news sites started uh, criticizing Ben Ali or someone else from the administration, the uh, support from the advertising was cut. So that uh, example tends to be reiterated, and uh, that is the difficulty we tend to encounter in Tunisia. Furthermore, in order to be able to uh, ask for this kind of advertising, you have to have a fairly high rate of visits. But uh, it, if you do serious work, then you aren't going to have, generate that kind of internet traffic. However, Intox News uh, is the one that generates that uh, traffic. 
if you want to try to regulate uh, the system of, of Tunisian bloggers by implementing uh, some kind of platform which would be able to assess the content of the sites to say, well, this site is doing intox, whereas this other one doesn't, this would uh, give a much better reference frame for the readership but uh, would also give a framework for online media. So, in tangible terms, when uh, you want to launch a website, like, for example, dictator.net, you are an independent journalist, and so you need uh, some finance uh, to, to develop a website. You need to pay a developer, for example. What do you do in practical terms? Well, my friend is also a blogger, and so from uh, the time of the dictatorship, we uh, have been uh, used to um, doing DIY, and we, we didn't have to pay anyone. We just went to see a few friends, and uh, we uh, just worked until we uh, had a decent result, which can even actually be compete with uh, properly financed uh, Tunisian websites. So we uh, do the best we can and to find our path and to find means to do what we want to do. Personally, as a blogger, I have learned that, well, before we used to uh, watch uh, the uh, mainstream media, and then the day after the revolution, when we started to uh, enter into this uh, world and started to work with uh, other media, we were, to some extent, disillusioned because we realized that uh, more a media mean, means uh, financing, more it loses its independence. And it's very difficult for an independent blogger who is able to uh, touch on every subject to uh, try to conform to the uh, journalistic uh, framework especially as in uh, Tunisia we have certain groups and certain lobbies who try to control and to break some people's willpower. So it is very difficult to, to, uh, to be integrated in uh, news teams. So independence is not really a question of choice. It just happens because, uh, well, at the time we used to be independent and now when we try to uh, enter certain uh, newsrooms, we find we are no longer able to do what we used to be able to do. And so mm, we end up coming back to blogging. So now we will uh, go to questions in the room. And uh, if you have anything to say on uh, these uh, two stories which you have heard, are there any questions? Over here in front, I need the microphone. Is it working? Yes. So we cannot make a living out of journalism. Pardon? So we cannot make a living out of journalism. Oui, on ne, on ne peut pas vivre. No. No, we can't live from it. The uh, greatest uh, quantity of financing comes from uh, fixing. Foreign journalists, uh, when they come to Tunisia, need uh, locals. Over the year, what I've earned mostly comes from uh, fixing than from journalism. So, no, we cannot yet live from journalism. It's very difficult still in Tunisia because we don't have this journalistic tradition which exists in Europe. We are still in a certain format. When you buy a newspaper, it is 36,000 people who are reading it. You don't have this same dynamic in Europe. You don't have the tradition of reading the newspaper every morning and a sense of uh, sharing, which means that uh, you cannot uh, really live off from this uh, job. To be clear, um, I'm not sure that everyone knows the term fixing. What's it mean? So it's to, to accompany foreign journalists and to try to uh, uh, give them information and try to find them uh, people to interview. You can only die in the journalism. We can hope that it will make us live. But uh, we can hope that it will allow us to live from time to time. Hi. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to, for a journalist to make a, a journalist to make a uh, living. Uh, two questions. Tunisia is in a very different situation to France, but uh, 
could our Tunisian friends uh, put pressure on the Tunisian state to, to get them to uh, organize and manage uh, the world of advertising in Algeria? Of course, it doesn't work that way, but they had this idea of uh, in of um, setting up uh, a, an institution which, is, which manages all public advertising and then uh, redistributes uh, this advertising to newspapers. Um, but of course, uh, the newspapers uh, abuse the system and uh, they uh, change their editorial uh, content in order to uh, attract the most advertising. But that is their own fault. And of course, from the side of the state, there are abuses of power. But I would say that from the side of the press, there are abuses of obedience. So sometimes the state does not uh, demand as much uh, obedience or uh, uh, for them to go as much towards their their way of seeing. So would it not be a good idea to have uh, some kind of organization responsible for redistributing advertising? We're not talking about uh, grants, because of course I can understand that uh, Tunisia, unlike France, is not able to uh, subsidize uh, journalism. But I would have thought that this kind of model should work, of course, without encouraging an abuse of obedience. My second point, of course, this uh, experience is a very interesting. But uh, do you not think uh, that this problem of uh, online payment, which is difficult uh, to implement, but uh, in your experience, what could you um, suggest for a country like uh, Algeria or uh, Tunisia or other sub-Saharan countries in order to implement online payment? So in terms of the uh, agency, yes, this agency exists, but we are very wary of uh, this agency because during the uh, uh, dictatorship, uh, this agency was used to kill off any of the opposition. Uh, no, none of the opposition journalists were allowed to have any of the advertising. So we see this agency as an agency of control, and that's uh, what was uh, done to control all of the uh, uh, opposition newspapers who used to live just from, uh, uh, from, uh, from gifts from donations. But uh, so yes, this agency exists, but it can also be abused. Yes, and I will uh, come in to support this. I think in a general manner, the state uh, should not intervene in the life uh, of uh, newspapers, or at least as little as possible, including in democratic countries like in France. And even here, we can see that the system of uh, grants, be it uh, by uh, advertising or directly, uh, there is influence. The uh, Prime Minister has an agency which uh, distributes a lot of uh, advertising, government publicity for such and such a cause. And uh, we know that this can uh, lead to abuse even in a country where there are uh, counterbalances to power. And uh, here I am uh, talking in the name of the uh, is in my, my function of being the president of the SPIL, the uh, Trade Union for Independent uh, Press Online. So as such, uh, our trade union has uh, fought a lot uh, over the last few years against uh, the uh, system of uh, grant, uh, grants in France uh, for journalism, which is uh, neither transparent nor efficient. This uh, sense, sense of this system of uh, grants uh, tends to bias the system in one way or the other. And in terms of journalists, it's not necessarily an abuse of uh, obedience, but let's say that they tend to use uh, these uh, grants, the support from grants, to not uh, implement uh, important technological uh, advances, which actually they should do in order to gain efficiency. However, what the state can do is to ensure that there is an ecosystem which is uh, favorable to uh, press enterprises. For example, in France, uh, they have a uh, VAT rate of 2.5%, whereas uh, on average, uh, uh, everything else is um, taxed at 2.6%. So, uh, of course, journalism in France is, uh, is favored because it, has, it benefits from a lower VAT uh, level. And uh, that is uh, fairly straightforward. It doesn't mean that uh, we have to uh, ask for grants or whatever. So we are in favor of what we call indirect uh, supports, i.e. support systems which are intrinsic to the system itself and not reliant on redistribution, which, of course, is not yet the case for the Internet, because uh, on the Internet today in France, there is uh, a big injustice. The same article sold in paper form is uh, taxed at 2.10%. Uh, but is uh, 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 but then uh, taxed uh, higher for the internet, and so it's uh, actually creating fairly difficult to understand injustices. And the state uh, has not yet decided to apply the same uh, level of VAT for online or paper media. So you see there are inequalities 
even here. The other question regarding I think there is Et quelque chose qui est aussi est what uh, Sifian was saying uh, earlier is interesting, is that uh, there is a competition to gain the biggest readership, uh, and uh, that is what uh, the competition is generating. Um, people are doing everything they can in order to increase their readership, and you know, the greater your readership, the more advertising you get, and uh, these are the only form of income for free websites. What is great about a paying uh, um, system is that you come back to the principle of the press, uh, like the reader buying his newspaper, whether he buys it in the uh, news kiosk in a physical manner or whether he buys it online, the approach is identical. This uh, question of the technical means is an important one. I have discovered that in Tunisia, uh, internet users uh, cannot uh, pay with their credit card online. And the obligation that uh, banks should have to allow online payment is clearly uh, important in a democracy. There's also the problem that often in Africa, uh, credit cards are not very widespread. But uh, there is a country like uh, Kenya where it is very widespread. Uh, so where what is very widespread is a payment from a mobile phone. And that's become a real custom to not only uh, pay with your mobile phone, but also read on your mobile phone. And I think one of the developments of the press in uh, African countries, for example, is uh, using mobile payment and uh, mobile readership. And uh, we've seen in those countries that uh, the mobile network is uh, very uh, well developed and that you are easily able to read articles on your mobile phone. What's interesting is that um, you can even see quite a lot of photos uh, on your mobile phone, if not even videos. Uh, the fact that you can read uh, on your mobile phone is, is quite uh, an easy medium. And so the, being able to both read and pay with a mobile phone, I think that is very promising for the future. Bonjour, Henda de la Tunisie. Henda, I come from uh, Tunisia. Hello. Just a few words about my Tunisian experience. As was uh, said by the speaker, I mean, journalists uh, today uh, have a very hard time, especially uh, after the uh, revolution, because we still have the same system. Just an example, the Britain press after the 14th of January, there were more than uh, 200 uh, new newspapers on the market, and today only two survived. Why? Because there is the problem of advertising still controlled by the authorities, and because distribution is also controlled by people who cooperate with the public authorities. So, I mean, you can't talk about free journalism or free journalists that uh, make a living. Uh, if you don't have uh, freedom of uh, the press, I mean, uh, uh, if you can't reform the entire industry, I mean, you can't talk about that. Now, there is this uh, struggle uh, between uh, the expert civil society and the authorities uh, uh, who still want to control the uh, media, same thing for the TV, and uh, currently, uh, the audience is no longer a, a criterion to uh, attract advertising. When you have the highest ratings and then you have no advertising just because you're not in uh, agreement with those in power, that's extremely worrying for the future, the future of journalism and of the media, generally speaking. So that's our problem. You hardly ever have newspapers organizing a newsroom a conference where journalists can actually say about what they about what they think and what they would like to do, etc. So it's still the attitude of uh, wage earners uh, uh, going to work and doing their job. Uh, journalists are not demanding. I mean, they're, they're very happy with the very little they have. And you don't. We don't try to vary to change the contents. 
we don't uh, do anything for the political transition in our country. Why do we have that? Because the audience is not very demanding either, and people don't want to ask for more interesting media content. Uh, people are not, the population is not uh, demanding enough. So at the end of the day, the result is that the journalists are stuck in that uh, situation. They cannot demand more, ask for more money for the work they do because uh, nobody wants him to do more. Thank you. Sofiane? Yes, I, I fully uh, agree. Uh, these days in Tunisia, since the 14th of January 2011, all big corruption cases, uh, armed militia, etc., everything came out via bloggers, not journalists. And uh, quite often we want to suggest that to newspapers, but newspapers don't publish that. But once the bloggers have talked about it, then the journalists actually uh, say, well, yes, we would like to talk about it. So uh, those uh, newsrooms are very, uh, are not bold at all. They, 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 are, uh, they are scared and they're afraid of uh, revealing uh, anything. And so that needs to be taken into account. And if whenever you want to do investigative journalists or journalism or whatever, then, then of course your uh, news editor is going to tell you, well, no, no way, oh, no, no, keep calm, uh, we, we don't talk about these things, etc., etc. And, and during the uh, dictatorship, I mean, uh, newspapers were not there to inform, but uh, rather to relay the state propaganda and uh, So it was the newspapers were hiding the reality rather than uh, revealing it. So all this means that uh, we should have uh, more startups starting from scratch, no capital, no nothing. Uh, you try, uh, you make a mistake, uh, you fail, uh, then you try again, again and again. Yes, indeed, we're still looking for a uh, sustainable business model. And also, we don't have any regional newspapers. Does that exist in Tunisia? But uh, Tunisians would love to have that because they feel more concerned by something happening in their village than uh, elsewhere. But the economic, the business model is not sustainable at all, unfortunately, because very few people will be buying that uh, newspaper. It's too expensive. And so basically, uh, the idea is to have a collection of uh, local, uh, regional uh, bloggers who can uh, provide information, but they don't even find the uh, resources they need. More questions? Bonjour. J'aimerais savoir, enfin, profiter de cet atelier. Good uh, morning. I would like to talk about uh, advertising and access to Google advertising. Uh, access to Google advertising, how much does that represent on the advertising market? And could it be an alternative? Could it be a possibility, access to publicity advertising for online media in our, our country? Because in Haiti, uh, for instance, we have no access to the advertising market concerning the other uh, media. Now, when uh, we refer to Google uh, advertising or when you try and draw something from Google advertising, Google ads, then you realize that uh, it's very limited. So what is the strategic value of advertising Google ads? Just to give you uh, an idea, in France, the amount of uh, publicity or advertising spending, that's 2.5 billion euros. And Google captures 1.2 billion every year thereof. So Google certainly uh, captivates most of uh, uh, Google advertising via the search business, and Google ads, clearly. Yes, but Google 
ads, it's very little, a lot of money for Google and very little money for publishers. That's what you need to realize. I mean, Google is no longer a search engine. It's a, uh, an advertising company, full stop. And uh, what they do is fully focused on uh, advertising acquisition. That's it. And uh, all uh, press publishers, including in Europe, who thought that uh, the uh, income they could get from Google was uh, sufficient, they are currently realizing that uh, this source of uh, revenue is of income is f n insufficient to actually uh, fund uh, a staff, a newsroom, etc. So Google doesn't charge a lot for its uh, ads, but given that it has almost a monopoly on the market, I mean, they uh, catch up on quantity. And for each publisher, of course, it's very limited amounts of money. So it can be a small uh, side revenue. It can be small side revenues, but it's not. it can't be your main source of uh, funding. Yes, plus you need to have an account abroad. Yes, in some countries it's quite difficult to actually get uh, the uh, money coming from those advertising companies like Google because quite often Google uh, is not uh, based uh, in all or introduced in all uh, countries. But it might be a side source of uh, revenue and uh, we try to uh, develop uh, multiple sources of uh, revenues. Uh, hence, uh, video sharing platforms that include um, advertising that can help the uh, your site to develop. This is what the Wall Street Journal has been doing for a year. Hi. I work with Abdus Samar, who is the editor of my newspaper, AlgeriaFocus.com. I'm the owner of that site. My job is to uh, make money, and his job is to uh, make uh, quality uh, journalism and spend my money as he should, and he does that quite all right, so I'm happy. But um, first thing, I was, uh, I've was i worked in uh, Arthur Anderson and Bearing Point in Paris. I'm a consultant, business consultant. I've just uh, uh, finished a paper on the diversification of uh, revenues for AlgeriaFocus.com, and my consultant said to me, well, it's great, we're going to boost our revenues, but uh, as Sofiane said uh, before, I mean, small rivers lead to larger uh, rivers, and um, we've multiplied our revenues by three. 35% uh, of uh, the flows of Algeria Focus come from abroad, which means that uh, with new programs in Canada, France, the US, and England, we can actually cover 70% of our operational costs, operating costs, what uh, he spends on a daily basis. And uh, that's not bad. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, and that's why I would like to have your opinion, the st strategy of the uh, Figaro, which I studied, isn't that the right strategy? In other words, the Figaro is one of the most visited uh, sites in France. And they say, I have a flow, and I have to take advantage of that flow. So I'll buy uh, companies that make e-commerce. I'll plug them in onto uh, figaro.fr, and that will certainly help monetize my flows. This is what we are currently uh, trying uh, to do uh, without any uh, online payment uh, solutions. With uh, Well, anyway, I don't want to go into the details of that. But um, that strategy, I think, could be the right one. And again, the idea is that Abdul can do his work of a journalist, and uh, he keeps uh, telling me, we can't do this, we can't do that. Uh, yes, I don't know the world of journalism. I'm not a journalist. And so um, I would say also that the uh, this dual approach of business and journalism works quite well. It's not in the DNA of a journalist to actually make money. Thank you. Before you answer, uh, Maurice, I would say that uh, the Figaro is the number one uh, is the number one site in in France, but it's an aggregation under the Figaro brand of the traffic generated by the daily paper, the Figaro magazine, Figaro Madame, Le Conjugueur, and the Weather Channel. So uh, you need to uh, uh, relativize things. 
Yes, the example of Le Figaro is very, uh, very interesting because at the end of the day, they rediscover the basic uh, job, and the print press has always uh, lived uh, from uh, ads, looking for a job, etc. And the uh, Figaro, most of its uh, resources, uh, they missed the internet train and they lost revenue from their ads. And they came to realize, belatedly, and that's when they uh, started uh, buying uh, ad uh, sites, that they had to do something. And I think it's quite smart. And I think that's why the journal is quite balanced. Plus, there is no conflict of interest between a, uh, an ad site and an information site. So that's quite good. There's another example very telling about uh, strategic uh, mistakes made by some newspapers sometimes. West France started Le Bon Coin. Le Bon Coin is a site that is working really well in France these days. It's actually doing better than eBay. I mean, people are forgetting about eBay these days and put everything on Le Bon Coin. In West of France, that uh, started this site, actually decided to sell it to make money, cash to generate cash, and they did not realize that their future was in that particular business. Now, back to Le Figaro, there's the virtuous side, the ads, and there's a less virtuous side of things. It's that rate, race for uh, better ratings with uh, new uh, games, uh, uh, sites on French language, how to conjugate verbs, etc. It nothing to do with contents, but it helps. Uh, it means that uh, newsrooms will have to change some of their contents to actually make more, attract more viewers. So that's the dark side. So there is a bright side and there is a dark side. Yes, but when you have a, uh, a site where to con how to conjugate French words, uh, verbs, uh, uh, plus uh, having a site on Madame Le Figaro, does that have an impact on uh, what, you, uh, what you publish? Well, yes, it does, because uh, there is competition out there, and you need to do better than the other ones, and you need to be listed first in the search engine results. And so the, uh, the uh, parsing uh, site uh, is uh, quite all right. But I mean, the articles also need to be written in a logic uh, to generate uh, more uh, clicks and uh, viewers. Uh, uh, it's always the same information, but slightly changed so that it comes back up in their, uh, on their page, uh, focusing on topics that uh, make the buzz and not necessarily uh, subjects that uh, are serious uh, subjects, uh, etc. So that's this, it's the logic that generates a problem. It's a bit complicated. It's not very spectacular, but I mean, the, the Figaro are, are not the only one to do that. I mean, uh, there are other newspapers that do exactly the same thing because they focus on their uh, readers. They need more ratings. I would say that uh, the more ads they have, the less they will, the more they will be able to uh, focus on true journalism, quality journalism. I think we've come to an end. Yes, on, on the fact that you said that uh, we you were trying to uh, capture as many people as possible. I come from a country that is, uh, where there are so many taboos. Uh, isn't it danger to have self-censorship? Sex in my country is taboo, for instance. I cannot talk about sex or sex education. I cannot talk about gay people, etc. So it's very uh, biased. Uh, I mean, you have to be careful. Just because this, the topic is uh, will sell, it doesn't mean that I shouldn't talk about it. You have to be careful. Yes, the answer is in the question, right? Yes. I was always very uh, surprised, especially on African sites, where you have uh, no uh, ads announcing obituaries or new births, uh, etc., which is a service that we provide to the uh, readers uh, from which we can make money. And I was always surprised to see that there was no such uh, thing um, in Africa, especially uh, given that the population is very scattered, and I think it would be a great service. I know that the French uh, press is also lagging behind as far as this is uh, concerned in terms of online uh, announcements. Uh, 
or ads. But I mean, we could monetize the content and services. I think there's food for thought. Thank you very much to all of you for this uh, debate. Philippe, 